Welcome to TP Talks, PwC's Global Transfer Pricing podcast series. This episode is the first of a special series of episodes on tax analytics solutions for our clients. Today we will be discussing the art of the possible within the context of data and analytics. My name is Ben Brewer, and joining me today are Mike Moreland, a tax partner in the PwC Dallas office and PwC's Global Data and Analytics co-leader, Laurent Belay, a transfer pricing director in the PwC New York office and the global driver for transfer pricing analytics, and Anthony Teneriello, a customs and international trade partner in the PwC New York office and PwC's national leader for customs and international trade. Mike, when we speak of the art of the possible in the context of data and analytics, what do we mean and why are data and analytics so important for our clients today? So, Ben, Thanks for, uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about data and analytics. Thanks for having me on. So the art of the possible, it means that we are exploring ways to use data and analytics capabilities and tools in new ways that allow us to have deeper conversations with our clients. And those conversations aren't just about a specific deliverable or about a technical tax topic. They are about the broader issues that our clients face across their business. And it's about using that understanding and using these capabilities and tools to develop real solutions that have a real impact for these issues. So I'll give you an example of an area where expanding data and analytics capabilities and bringing those to bear has a, a real impact out of the gate. It's in country-by-country uh, country reporting. Is most of the guys on this call know that the countries who are part of the OECD initiative are requiring increasing transparency requirements for country-by-country country reporting. In addition to the transparency, the countries are starting to have a little more divergence in how they're implementing the rules. So you're not seeing complete uniformity across the countries. So it's getting more and more complex to figure out where your opportunities and your issues and your weaknesses are. And this isn't going to change. It's only going to become um, more of a requirement by these countries. The other kind of scary thing about this, and it's not just with the OECD and the BEPS reporting, is tax authorities are learning how to mine the data for their audit purposes. They're looking for places where they can find some weaknesses in a company's structure or their methodologies or their process. That's not just happening in the context of BEPS. That's happening across all taxing jurisdictions, including our own here in the U.S. So using these capabilities, data and analytics capabilities and tools, lets us go from looking at high level, say a structure chart or a tax return, to taking in massive volumes of data. It allows us to, to wrap our heads around that data very quickly and to surface potential issues and opportunities. It allows us to very quickly identify anomalies and outliers, not saying that we'll know exactly what those anomalies and outliers are, just seeing it visually, but we can identify them quickly and know where to spend time and dive down and have a, a deeper conversation to understand you know, what is it in your structure, what decisions are you making, and what is your business doing that should be driving your tax decision making. And further to Mike's point, uh, the insights and solutions that we've developed have resulted in significant value and I'd say in, in many instances transformative. I've had clients tell me that they've never had such insight and, and business-centric conversations given the information that we've been able to, to review and, and analyze, particularly in the area of customs, uh, indirect tax, that speaking with the transfer pricing teams and business operations given the, the linkages to, to tax, customs, VAT, and supply chain. And given certainly um, the visibility to, to data allowing the ability to defend or plan around the context of customs evaluation, for instance, uh, which is a very uh, hot topic and heavily audited area uh, around the world. You know, Anthony, that's, those are fantastic examples and great points. And one of the things that we see as we have these conversations with clients, incorporating data and analytics into the dialogue 
is that once you get down to the data level and have the conversation at, at that level, the idea of whether your discipline or your area of focus in the company is tax or treasury or finance or supply chain or accounts payable, it all kind of melts away. And we all start having a conversation around the business. And Laurent, I know you have an example of how you've used data and analytics to help address a client's issue that really brought tax to the center of the business. Yeah, that's right, Mike. Thank you. So as part of our first projects we did leveraging data analytics technologies, we looked at one of our clients that operates in the pharma industry for which we had performed like a typical transfer pricing project. And when we performed those projects, what we start by doing is requesting a, a lot of information. And we had been able to gather a significant volume of data from these clients on their operations across the world. So we wanted to leverage the uh, data analytics in order to have a better understanding of their footprint and also see if we could actually dig into the data in order to provide additional insight to the business and expand the dialogue beyond traditional transfer pricing boundaries. What we've done is actually leverage their local country P&Ls for their distribution activities. So we started the, the journey by looking at roughly 40 different Excel files with multiple tabs and thousands of rows. And by leveraging visualization techniques, we were able to identify profitability issues at the single SKU uh, level. So what was interesting when we talked to the client about this was we could not only fix the transfer pricing issues by looking at the results of every legal entity in each country's of operations, but also digging deeper in the data and start looking at the profitability uh, achieved by every single product across jurisdictions. And what was interesting here was the reaction of the client, because even though this data was available within the organization, it was collected in a way that was not efficient and did not allow them to actually perform this analysis in such a, an accurate and efficient manner. And what happened after that is that Instead of limiting our discussion to a group of transfer pricing and tax uh, professionals, the client invited additional stakeholders at the table and started having discussions around consistency and streamlining profitability across products, across jurisdictions. So what this resulted in something very, very appealing to the tax department because all of a sudden, the transfer pricing team was at the center of the business decision-making process. They were directly involved in more extensive discussions around price setting in various jurisdictions, but not only on, on an intercompany basis, also in terms of the profitability achieved by each product in different markets because we could identify right away significant discrepancies between what a product uh, would achieve in, in a region or a country versus another one. And we could actually start having discussions about what would be the best business response to those discrepancies as opposed to simply having our transfer pricing teams recommending certain uh, transfer pricing adjustments at the legal entity level. Right, Laurent. And beyond the impact of transfer pricing, the visualization tool has created significant opportunities with respect to customs, you mentioned customs just really being one of those key stakeholders in this exercise. And, and as most know, customs being a transactionally driven tack really hones in on few level uh, information and, uh, and detail, uh, particularly again, since there's often a disparity in the duty rates at the product or product category level. So authorities, customs authorities are often sensitive to profitability you know, even at that SKU level. So having access to that data is key to being able to establish controls over customs valuation on a go-forward basis and certainly in defending against historical customs valuation audits. It also enables the business customs as a key stakeholder to help manage uh, local impact on, uh, on overnight price changes that might otherwise raise red flags with customs and, and trigger immediate audits and also gives the opportunity to prepare and assess in the context of managing the impact of transfer pricing adjustments, whether upwards or downwards. So in, in all, quite a bit of uh, value to the business. So, so Laurent, what do you think are some of the key considerations and challenges for clients as they embrace and leverage data for decision-making? 
I think one of the main uh, considerations to make is really not to set any boundaries around what you can achieve by leveraging data analytics in, in looking at your data sets and having a different view on or look at your operations from a different angle. I think in that example, it's clear proof of concept that when leveraging data analytics for a, a specific purpose, which was like transfer pricing in our case, we managed to actually identify potential solutions and provide insight to the business in additional areas of expertise, being customs or more commercial activities. I think one of the main issues that clients face today is on the input side of the process. As you know, many companies, especially those who have developed through in intensive M&A activities, rely on very diverse sources of data, multiple ERP system, etc. So sometimes it's very difficult for clients to actually access the data they would uh, use to, to perform those data analytics projects or analysis. We, we also have developed over time some solutions to help them uh, develop those extraction capacities. And what's, what's really interesting, I've noticed many times when talking to clients, is that we see a lot of solutions in the market that are more software-like solution, which I like to call top-down solutions, where you can achieve or obtain a certain output provided that you can gather or collect the information to feed into the tool. And this is where we see the, the main pain points with the clients. What we're trying to do here in PwC is more, is rather to have like a bottom-up approach where we really look at client data extraction capacity and make an inventory of the data that is available. And then we, we build solutions, business intelligence solutions to Together with them based on the input they can provide. And once this gap is bridged, there's no limitation anymore as what we can achieve leveraging data analytics. So, guys, I think you would agree with this assertion that as much as the value that's created by using data and analytics capabilities and tools with a conversation with some of our clients in a particular area, let's say tax and let's say transfer pricing, almost as much or maybe even to, to some extent more interesting and valuable that comes out of those types of conversations is that it helps to align the tax folks with the finance folks, with the IT folks, the treasury folks across the organization. The reality is that even though tax sounds scary to people who don't necessarily have the, the tax background, it's just like any other set of laws, right? It's a set of rules that have to be uh, followed in order to do business, which is no different than any other aspect of a business. It's just another cost of doing business that affects almost every aspect of a client's value chain. So when you have that conversation with a client at the data level and you start looking at the client's business, the business processes and their value chain, how they make money, you very quickly get to that point where you are, as you guys mentioned, you're bringing in other stakeholders in the company to start to have those conversations. I want to make an additional point about data and analytics. When we survey CEOs of, of large companies around the world about data and analytics, a high percentage of them believe that it is critical, important, that they incorporate data and analytics into their business if you ask the question, well, how comfortable are you or confident are you that you are incorporating data and analytics into your business, the percentage flips. Companies, CEOs are not confident that they are appropriately using data and analytics to the extent they should be in their business. I think part of the reason is, well, one of it is it varies by industry level of sophistication, but I think an overarching reason for that is that we're not sure how to use data and analytics. I think when we think about it out of the gate, we immediately go to artificial intelligence and machine learning and advanced data and analytics concepts and capabilities, but not everybody's at that place. Many people, many companies are at a place that is earlier on in the learning curve of how to use data and analytics in their business. It could be starting with better business intelligence could be starting with better data extraction and management or moving to some visualization of different aspects of their business. And moving from there into something that is more advanced, you can go to predictive analytics, you know, using the history of what's happened and providing data into a set of algorithms. So it's incremental. You have to learn to crawl before you can walk, before you can run. And I believe that a lot of companies just haven't 
figured out how to walk yet or how to crawl. And that's where we're, we're having a lot of success in really opening a dialogue with our clients is, well, where are you on that learning curve? And we will meet you there and we'll start that journey together, take you from wherever you are in the learning curve as far as you want to go. I want to thank Mike, Laurent, and Anthony for a very interesting conversation, and thank you to all of our listeners. As mentioned, this is the first of a several-part series on tax analytics topics and solutions, so be sure to stay tuned for future episodes. If you'd like further information about these topics, please email the participants, whose email addresses can be found in the description of the episode.